DJ Felly Fell. Yeah. Oh, man, thank you for uh, coming by Game Changers. Man, thank you for having me. I had to have My you, pleasure. honestly. You know, it's uh, I'm, I'm l- lucky enough to kind of like work closely with you and, and, and uh, see you at work. And I've seen, you know, in the short period of time that I've been um, at Power 106, uh, the influence that kind of you've had over the culture, uh, over your career. And it's amazing for me to kind of like see these things and learn. And the real thing about Game Changes is it's a it's a platform for uh, young people that look up to uh, producers, DJs, musicians, basketball players, whatever it is, and they have access to them. And your story, I know from what I've heard so far, and I'm sure I've only heard a very small part, is an amazing story. Um, and that's why I wanted to have you sit down here with me today. Thank, I mean, just to be considered a game changer, you know, in a game that, you know, has done so much for me and mm-hmm. that I love so much, it's just, it's flattering, man. Of course. And you, you know, I like, you're, you're on the radio every day. Um, does it ever like kind of get old before we even get back to and I, I want to get back to like where it started and whatnot but I just wanted to do you know like do you does it cross your mind that millions of people kind of like hear you every day and you're really influencing and talking to people it, it does uh, and to answer your question you know I'll, I'll tell you this I, I wouldn't say it gets old mm-hmm. I think when you've when you've done something consistently for a long period of time, whether it's a sport or whether it's you know um, in this case radio, mm-hmm. I think it's kind of like being married mm-hmm. and keeping your sex life you know exciting. How do you keep it exciting? Um, you know, like I know that we're you, still talking about radio. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> How do you keep your I'm radio not ma- I'm, I'm not sex married, life? <laughs> uh, but but I think you just you know for me, um, it it helps that you know every day there's a different story Mm -hmm. every day there's a different artist every day there's a different song yeah um and and some people and i've I've got that question a lot um i've got that question a lot about you know does it ever feel like groundhog day Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying yeah and uh and it can but but i i i think i've learned how to um i think it's just so much i have such a love for it Mm -hmm. again yeah but but uh it's just um it, it it's 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 keeping it exciting. It, Fresh. It's, yeah, you got and you know I think a lot of people when you start looking at something as a job, mm-hmm. I think that's when it gets you know. But I don't look at um, I don't look at radio mm-hmm. as a job. I don't look at DJing as a job. I yeah. don't look at producing music as a job. If anything, that's such a blessing. I look at it as a savior. Mm-hmm. It's a saving grace. Yeah. So, um, but I will say this. There is times where I've caught myself going, oh man, you know, and 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 as as quickly as I get into that little state of mind, mm-hmm. I get out of it. Yeah, because uh, I'm pretty cognizant, or I I guess I should say uh, I'm pretty conscious mm-hmm. and self aware. Um, I like to think so, and so I, I smack myself every once in a while and say, you know what the fuck are you doing mm-hmm. like you know yeah. yeah you're 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 on top of the world and that's something that when i was sitting kind of like putting together how i wanted this to kind of flow and and just get into a certain things i kind of thought that about you and i kind of mm-hmm. like went back and went you know i think Feli is very like you said self-aware and i think that's why you've been able to you know mold with the culture and help change it and make sure that you stay relevant and that you can have your input where you need to have it. And that's rare. Because I don't think Thank most you. people are self-aware like that. <laughs> and that those people are the ones that I think allow others from below and, and people to look up to and, and find some type of inspiration because there's not a lot of them, you know? And that's why I'm sitting down with them right now. Uh, my mom taught me well. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it pops too. Mm-hmm. And... and also, I've learned from seeing people come and go in the yeah. game. You mm-hmm. know, I think that's the biggest thing is, um, you know, you, 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 us breaking an artist at, at, at such a big radio station and such yeah. a big platform in such a big city like Los Angeles mm-hmm. and seeing this this particular artist, whoever it may be, I can, I can name a lot, mm-hmm. um, be so excited and, you know, they're in the game and yeah. they made it. Um, and then they're gone. Then they're gone. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and and I've learned from that, and and to a certain degree, maybe even dissected 
without even really knowing it, like, uh, why did that happen with this person? And what did, what did they do? You know, what could they have done mm. better yeah. uh, to either prolong their career or, you know, to make it an everlasting, you know, career? Yeah. Because I do believe, um, you know, because I want to do this forever. Yeah. And, and, and I think I, it, it's, it's, it's just, it's in me um, to radio and, and, and just music, um, DJing it's mm -hmm. I could never see myself doing anything else nor do I want to yeah. and that's another thing yeah let's just keep it real mm -hmm. like there's a little bit of fear motivating as well you're like I can't be doing anything else so I gotta make yeah. sure I'm working <laughs> yeah. with this and, yeah. yeah and you know you know it, it, when you're able to do something that you love and make good money at it uh, uh, that's another thing that the, the, the I've had this fear of um, and it's funny because some years ago I think I read something or I saw something somewhere and it kind of was uh, surprising to me that uh Will Smith and I shared this 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 which is he was his biggest fear was n not being able to take care of himself. Yeah. And, and from a financial mm -hmm. standpoint um you guys can go look this up but it's yeah. it, and I'm probably telling it a little off but but he was basically saying like that's been a big motivation and no matter how much money he made mm -hmm. uh, and God knows I haven't made the type of money that that will Smith big made. Willie style but, yeah but, but but what I've done mm -hmm. you know is way more than I would have ever hoped or dreamed yeah you know because uh, you know I just loved DJing I loved you know producing music and the DJing and producing music got me into radio um and then when I discovered the love for radio, um, you know, and obviously I've done pretty well with, you know, it's really radio is taking care mm -hmm. of me a lot, man. I've been real fortunate. Uh, How does and, it feel to be able to talk about your like passion and know that that's what has financially <laughs> allowed you to be? where you are like that's a dream that most people never get to really accomplish. it is and, it, and, it, and it's it, what i was going to say it's the fear of what if that goes away mm -hmm. and, and i'm not able to take care of myself or my family um in the same you know and that motivates me but um yeah i i think it, it it's first of all everything that you're saying is very flattering mm -hmm. man and uh uh, you know, I've worked really hard over the years to to get where I'm at, mm -hmm. but but maybe even harder. Uh, and I tell people this all the time, mm -hmm. like to to maintain it. Yeah. You know, to get somewhere, mm -hmm. you know, is it could be difficult. Yeah. But to to get there and to stay there, and I think I may uh, I'm 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 venturing off a little bit from your question. No, no. Uh, for, this is this is, and, and you know what? It's funny because a lot of people that sit down in that seat. They say that I'm venturing off. I go. This is what this is about. <laughs> this is your story. I definitely you am know? a venture offer type <laughs> of person. Uh, but uh, yeah, man. Like I just, bro. Like when I so growing up, I was in a. I grew up in a very urban surrounding mm -hmm. uh, in Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah. And 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 the, and I was in the midst of the you know the birth of hip hop, yeah. you know, damn near. I, I was pretty much at the hospital when hip hop so came out of the womb, you yeah. know, and, and it was amazing to me. I was already a music guy and then to see hip hop evolve and, 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 it, and I just latched on to it. It was an escape for me. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, m shortly after I got into DJing in my room, mm -hmm. you know, at home. How do you get into DJing? Like, I, you mess age. up your mom. You, you put a, a paper towel on your mom's turntable yeah. to, as a slip mat, <laughs> and you put a penny or a quarter on the on the needle. Yeah. Uh, and and you and you and your and your best friend across the street that has a UTFO Roxanne Shante record. Yeah. You you steal it from his house and you put it on your mom's turntable. And you fuck up the record and your mom's turntable. This is how Fe that's how Felly became a DJ. It right is there. my my best friend and one of my best friends, the best homies in the world yeah. to this day. Uh, his name's Tony Cruz. I grew up with him in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. uh, we still hang. He comes out here to LA, kicks it. When I go home to visit mom, mm -hmm. I, I'm I'm over it. Yeah, Lily Matthews' house. His, yes. his mom, Lily. But uh, one day, and he lived across the street. You know, we grew up playing sports together and just mm -hmm. hanging in the in the neighborhood. He had a, a piece of vinyl, yeah, and it was a it was a UTFO record. Mm -hmm. Which um, for everybody who doesn't know what UTFO is, it was um, it was a rap group signed to Select Records back in the day, mm -hmm. um, and and they had a, a record called Roxanne Roxanne, yeah, and that and I'd always hear it on the radio, 
uh, on V103 in Atlanta. And this particular day, I was at I was at Tony's house, and mm-hmm. I saw a record. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, yo, this is that record. Yeah. And and I'm like, yo, I need to I need to borrow, I need to listen to this. So I took <laughs> I need it to home. go ruin this record. Yeah, I need to go ruin this record. And you're never gonna get it back <laughs> after I ruin it. But uh, and that's actually what happened. Yeah. It's funny because we joke about that to this day. To this day. Because you know he's proud of my accomplishments, mm-hmm. my boy Tony, and he tells people, uh, yeah, man, he, he, he the first record. He I gave ever, him the first yeah, record to no, use. No, but it's real it. shit. It's yeah. real shit. And uh, but <laughs> to answer your question, I started off mm-hmm. at the crib messing around, yeah. and then um, moved you, to yeah. Los Angeles. So, but but before you moved to LA, mm-hmm. like how old are you when you moved to LA? I was sixteen. I was in high school. Okay, so are you already at that stage DJing, like going up doing parties no, or anything? No. Else? When I was in Atlanta, I was a bedroom DJ. Okay, is is what we yeah. refer to it as. Uh, and and when I got to LA. Um, we moved to Pomona. Mm-hmm. Uh, my mom had remarried, and and uh, my stepdad' you know, job was in that area. So we moved to Pomona. Yeah, I went to Gary High School. Okay, yeah. And uh, every Friday they would have a DJ out in the because you know, and I know you didn't go to school and grow yeah. up here in LA, but but back in the uh, and I don't know how it was out in, 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 Australia. in Australia, but every Friday, you know, the weather's great out here, mm-hmm. so they'd have a DJ outside. We eat kind of like what Power does now when they go to school yeah. on Fridays no, and for they, sure. they DJ. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't remember there being a radio station yeah. in our school, but we would have a different DJ every Friday. That's it. And I remember, man, I'd post up and, and you know, I, I met some DJs mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, did a couple of house parties in, in high school. That's what it was. And yeah. then family ended up moving to Dallas and in Dallas, that's when I really started homing in on my talent mm-hmm. as a DJ. Yeah. And uh, went from being a bedroom DJ uh, to getting an opportunity to do house part- more house parties. Mm-hmm. And then got approached by a friend of mine. Um, his name was Carlos. Oh, what was Carlos' last name? He saw me at a house party. Mm-hmm. You know, He came to me and said, hey, man, I want to take you to this club. Yeah. They're looking for a DJ. And it was a Salsa Marengue club. Yeah. And i never forget the owner, Ismael Sanchez. Um, it was an all Spanish club and they wanted a DJ who could play English music. Yeah. And he took me in there one night. He's like, just show him what you did the other night at the house party. So I did a little 20 minute set. Yeah. And that was my first club gig at 19 years old. Um, uh, and I was the resident, uh, one of the resident DJs Thursday through Sunday. I yeah. think I made 75 bucks a night. But back then, yeah, you know, I was making, you know, if 300 you're bucks paid, a weekend. If you're getting paid to now go I was and getting, DJ, exactly. you're happy. I'm like, you're going to pay me you're $75? Gonna, I do this for free in my oh, bedroom man. every day. And I get to have some drinks yeah. and, and see some, 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 some nice looking things. And, yeah. So, you know, 19 years old, I'm at this club. That led to a bigger club. Mm. Um, bigger club, bigger club. Before you know it, I'm doing the the biggest clubs in the city. I had learned, and again, this is in Dallas, and I was um, producing music. I mm-hmm. started, you know, producing on an SB twelve hundred, yeah, um, uh, beat machine, producing local Dallas acts. So um, producing urban acts, mm-hmm. but I was DJing at a lot of the Latin clubs mm-hmm. and in in commercial clubs, and then that led to radio. Did you did you get a lot of support from your family? wanting to get into DJing and kind of music? Yes, yes and no. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yes, in the sense that I had a mom, I had the cool mom. You know, she bought me, she she got me, I, I, I was in band when I was growing up. I played the trumpet. No way. From fifth, sixth, seventh grade. And then in in seventh grade, they moved me to baritone. And I remember it hurt my feelings because the band director in front of the whole class was like, we're moving you to baritone. And I was I was hurt because I love playing the trumpet. I was first chair trumpet. Wow. Uh, And and he said, you you know, your lip embouchure. And I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, you have big lips. And he's like, you're going to do good on the baritone. Yeah. And uh you know, now I know that my 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 lips is a good thing to have. You yeah, know, yeah. The, the lips that I have. You yeah. Know, so they tell me. <laughs> the ladies but, tell but, you. But they tell me, and and back then though, it was like I was crushed. I yeah. was like, what? You no. Know, and I go home, and I'm all upset. Tell mm-hmm. my mom, like he said, I got big lips, and then moved me to the baritone. Yeah. Uh, but what does your mom say about that? About me, moving? well, like, well, like, as like, because that obviously like affected my mom said, you. you do have big lips. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But like that, obviously, that that kind of affected you in wanting to like, like music was obviously in your blood. So, so shortly after that, I stopped because mm-hmm. um, 
A, I didn't like the baritone, mm-hmm. and B, um, by the time I hit eighth grade, yeah. I was the sports kind of took over. Yeah, uh, and I it was hard for me to play. You know, and I played every sport. Yeah. And some I excelled yeah. at better than other ones. Baseball was my sport. Yeah, and it was hard for me to play sports and. Um, and do music, and do as music, well. and and it, and it became not as cool, cool. to be in band mm-hmm. once you get like in junior high. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And so I got away from that. But my mom brought me a drum set. Again, I had the cool mom. She bought me a drum set from our church. Yeah. Uh, I also sang choir in church. So those were my starting days of music. And we had a piano in the house. My mom yeah. p- played piano. So I had a you know oh, I had so a you musical had music yeah, around you. I did, and and living in Atlanta is a very music you know music dri- you know mm-hmm. musical city, um, and then started a band because mm-hmm. I was the drummer, and you know everybody comes to your house yeah because you have the drum set it's yeah. easier to bring a well, guitar. Well, I played the drums growing up as well. So you so, already know. Yeah, and you know so the drum set would stay stationary, and everybody would come to me, mm-hmm. and I had a little you know had a little band. And it was it was more it was like a rock soul type thing going on, and and that was when you know hip hop was coming up. So we were just having fun yeah. playing any and everything. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, we'd do a Run DMC song and, and do our version of it, but we'd also do a a Van Halen song. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And uh, shortly after that, uh, that's when I got into you know learning mm-hmm. how to DJ. You know, at the crib. Yeah. And then we moved to LA. But um, is it at this stage? What's cooler to you? Is it hip hop at this stage that's cooler, or is it rock being the drummer? Uh, I mean, definitely hip hop, man, mm-hmm. for me because the DJ and just took over, and and I lost. I, I don't want to say I lost interest in playing the drums, mm-hmm. but um, you know, it, it, it a lot of it is also it's easier to t- to carry around oh some my turntables. If Although, anyone's been a drummer and they, un- but they, back, <laughs> back then I guess you had crates and stuff though. That was what I was say. It, 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 although there was the crates, mm-hmm. which didn't come in until later when my collection got bigger and bigger, and yeah. that's when I started thinking like, damn, I could have just been playing the drums. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're like, wait a second, this is just as heavy. Right, right. But it was more of just I I, I developed a love for DJing mm-hmm. more so than playing the drums. Yeah, you know. Although today, if you put a drum set in front of me, I will swear up and down that yeah. I'm Travis Barker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and I'm absolutely not. Yeah. Uh, kind of like when you give me a basketball, I'm Michael Jordan. Hey, yo. I'm Kobe Bryant. Fairly on the court. I'll you got to believe props, in yourself, I'll man. I'll give you props on the court. Nah, you got the moves. You're being not. Nah, you you're got, the, you're you the got some moves. You're the baller. Real talk, though. So at this stage, you, so you, you've you kind of like moved towards like, all right, DJing is where you're going. Right. Um, Where is it that it starts to like click and you go, damn, this is like actually going towards like a career where I don't have to like go and get some other job so that was again in dallas you know again i was producing music for local guys Mm -hmm. girls Mm -hmm. uh and i was and i was djing at the clubs Mm -hmm. and then i started working at a community radio station the community radio station led to a spanish station which Mm -hmm. i didn't understand why they hired me there yeah and how it ended up making sense because my spanish was just good enough to introduce a selena song yeah (laughs) uh god rest uh, her soul that was during the selena years and um my ratings did really good on the Spanish station, and mm-hmm. S- uh, Sammy Gonzalez was her name. Yeah, she hired me. She was a she was a pop rhythmic radio girl mm-hmm. who got a programming job at a Spanish station, and she knew who I was. Yeah, uh, unbeknownst to me, and I'm like Sammy Gonzalez from mm-hmm. 100.3 Jams knows who I am, and she hired me uh, to do the Spanish station. It lasted for about a year, mm-hmm. maybe a year and a half, and I took the job because it paid. It was a commercial gig. Yeah, uh, and it was my first time doing a commercial radio yeah. as opposed to community radio didn't pay mm-hmm. and i you know it, it so i it lasted for about a year maybe and then i went back to do doing community radio uh and by the way it it, it only lasted a year because it was a i it was a, i got tired of it yeah. and and they hired a new program director mm-hmm. um he me and him didn't really hit it off great yeah um, and it just i didn't wasn't having fun mm-hmm. and i left went back to community radio and then i got the call from the big hip-hop station in, in dallas mm-hmm. which was k104 kkda yeah. and and i took off on the station yeah and i think and, and my music started you know as a producer are you dj felly fell at this stage i was dj felony felony at so this stage. so felony and, and, and where did that come from it came about from entering a, a dj contest okay and my buddies were when i got off the stage were saying you're bad like a felony uh, there was a kid 
kind of crazy kid yelling every time every the, every time a DJ would go on stage and do their battle yeah. set, he would yell stuff. Yeah. And apparently when I was there, he was yelling, "You're bad like, like a, a felony. felony." And um my buddies never stopped cuz they I was like, wow. "Yeah, hey, that's that we're going to start calling you felony." Yeah. Cuz I didn't have a DJ. I was DJ J cuz my name was you know, J- my name, yeah, my name yeah. was James. Mm-hmm. And they were like, "Man, you can't be DJ J." <laughs> and and so they they started calling me felony yeah. because they knew that I didn't like it. Mm-hmm. So your buddies find oh, out course. you don't like oh that name. Oh my god. Never That's what let any of your you. friends know something Man. you don't like them doing. Man, and and it stuck and then as I got bigger as a DJ mm-hmm. and a producer and especially when I got on the radio, I slowly everybody would call me fell mm-hmm. or uh, and felly. Yeah. And and so I just dropped the fe- felony slowly and rolled with the felly, mm-hmm. um, and it, and it, and, it, and it, you know it wasn't a friendly radio name, um, and yeah by the time by the time I got to L A, the felony was was it was going going away mm-hmm. and the, and the, the felly had you know and I was also growing I yeah. was growing as a DJ and as an artist mm-hmm. and as a person yeah. And and I think whereas before it didn't bother me as not as much to have that kind of stigma as the yeah. felony. Felony, yeah. Well, did you go to prison? You know, no, all my other buddies did. Yeah, but not me. But I'm clean. Which was true. Yeah. You know, I I I saw that was another motivating factor for me. Mm-hmm. Um, you had a lot of close friends around you. I, that... I had a I, I grew up. You know, let's just say that the crowd I was running with it was tough, mm-hmm. and you know, and I was constantly surrounding myself with the music i think to try to get away from that yeah uh my family had moved back to atlanta and i stayed in dallas and i was on my own so that's the first time really you're away from your family um for the most part yeah yeah uh and you know i was i was on my own at 18 Mm -hmm. and um but yeah i was growing and and when i got the opportunity to come to la Mm -hmm. it was it was just a whole it was a it was it was a new beginning was L.A. like a goal for you, or did it kind of come out of nowhere? You know what? Yeah, uh, because I, I had gone to high school here, and when I moved to Dallas, did my thing, mm-hmm. but I got to the point where I, I knew that I needed to be in, in a bigger, in L.A., in LA and yeah. I loved L.A. because mm-hmm. getting the taste of it, going to high school here, Yeah, uh, you know, I was into, into low riders, you know, into mm-hmm. cars, which I still which am. Which still into, yeah. So I'm still in the same, in the same car club yeah. that I that I got introduced to back, you know, still affiliated with uh, Elite Car Club. Shout mm-hmm. out to my boy, Albert D'Alba. Mm-hmm. Uh, met him in yeah. high school, and here we are years later. We still, we still, so cool. still down, man. It's been great, but... Um, you know, I was into cars and um, L.A. kind of just went hand in hand. It, with... it did, and the music and just you know, uh, it just fit me, and I and I and and it was it was a part of who I was because I was such an influence on me mm-hmm. when I moved here, being young in high school. So yeah, I wanted to come back to answer mm-hmm. your question. The way that happened, um, I took a week off of of the radio station that I was working in for Dallas. in Dallas. Yeah. And uh, came out here to shop my music. Okay. And uh, set up a bunch of meetings, you know, A and R meetings. Um, had a bunch of buddies that were on the pr- promo side. Mm-hmm. Um, and buys one was one of them, and he knew I was coming out here. Still in the game. He knew I, he was still in the game doing yeah. it. What's up, buys? Yeah. And buys knew I was coming to L.A. Mm-hmm. He calls me and he's like, "Yo, I know you're out here. Uh, I know you play ball. Yeah. Do you want to go play ball at DJ Quick's house tomorrow?" And I was like, "Hell wow. yeah!" You know. And obviously, being a huge fan of DJ Quick, yeah, uh, which I still am, uh, I said, "Hell yeah!" And he comes, picks me up at the hotel I was staying at in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. We go to Quick's house, play uh, on our way to Quick's house. Buys had to stop at Power to drop off some vinyl. Wow. Uh, and, and he's like, come up with me. So we come up, and I'm kind of chilling in the hall, and he's in there talking to this 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 kid. And I'm like, man, I recognize this dude. At the end of the meeting, Buys walks out with this guy, and it's E-Man. And E-Man's like, Felly fell. And I'm like, oh, man. And he goes, and Felly he, knew, uh, E-Man, E-Man knew, knew who, who you I were. was. And I knew who he was, but couldn't exactly yeah, remember. Yeah, pinpoint it. Uh, but I think Buys had kind of told him, like, Felly from Dallas is in the yeah. hall. And E-Man said, oh, I know him. And he comes out, he goes, Felly, we met in Miami a couple of years ago yeah. at a at a Loud Records Steve Rifkin 
uh, music dinner party, mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah. And immediately I remembered because we were popping sham bottles and, yeah. and E-Man was going in. Damn, and E-Man was like that? We, and we were with Mind Motion from the Bay. Mm-hmm. Big shout to Mind Motion. It was it was back in the day. But that but he brought that up and I and immediately I remembered and we started talking and he yeah. was like, yo, man, I heard you're doing big things in Dallas. And he said, we're looking for a night guy. Uh, and I'm like, he, he, I think he asked me for an air check yeah. and, and I was like, I, you know, I'm not out here on radio stuff. Yeah. And he's like, well, can I introduce you to our new program director? So he goes and gets, you know, here comes this, this white guy walking down the hall <laughs> and I'm like, this is the program <laughs> Who's director? this dude? Yeah. And it, it ends up being Jimmy Steele yeah. and Jimmy, you know, asked me to send him an air check tape. Yeah. And uh, and I did. Mm-hmm. And I, and I sent the, I sent the tape in, didn't hear anything back initially. Yeah. I thought it was a bust, you mm-hmm. know, and uh, low which key. at the time you're out here doing music anyway. It's not really you weren't coming out here to find a radio right. gig, but but you know it did. You know the market after a couple of weeks went by. I'm like, ah eh, man, it yeah. kind of hurt my feeling. I was like, damn, I guess I didn't have what it took. Yeah. Uh, and then later on, ended up getting a call from him, Jimmy Steele from KPWR. He's like, I think he said he took a second honeymoon with his wife in hot in Hawaii. Or something okay, like yeah. That, so he which was is away. very rare, yeah, for him because he's you know he's a workaholic Work. all the time. So I, he ends up saying, "Hey man, I'm finally back, and I got your air check." And and he just he gave me some compliments, and he yeah. was like, "Man, everybody that we've let hear it up here, you know, thinks that you know, and ends up inviting me out, yeah, to a powerhouse show." Crazy. And he's like, I want you to see what we do. Came to a powerhouse. I believe this was in '99 or maybe it was 2000. Got to got to go to the powerhouse. Who's headlining in '99? God, was it Jay Z? Wow. Might have been Jay Z. Jermaine Dupri was there. If I if I'm, I think. I feel like I've been just, so many powerhouses. I feel like since then. was Vice there then or not? Vice? So Vice was DJing on the air. Because so I funny think I saw that. a shirt. <sighs> That he posted on Instagram last a few weeks ago. That was ninety nine shirt, and it did have, had, and it had Jay Z. That that was probably it. Then. Yeah, and it's funny because so I end up I come out here. It's funny you mentioned Vice. Um, <laughs> when when I came out, basically you know uh, that's what got me the job. Jimmy threw me on the air. Yeah, and after Powerhouse, mm-hmm. he's like, hey man, he's like, you know, when we get off the air, you know, when we get off out of the show. Why don't you go up and, 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 and it was like midnight and he's like, and then I'll see you in the morning. Did you know that you were coming out to go on air? No. Wow. He kind of put me on the spot. He put me on the air and I'm like, I'm kind of nervous because I got this other radio gig in, in Dallas. Do they know at this time that you're coming out here no. for this? They no. have no idea. They have no idea. Yeah. Uh, so, so I end up on the air and he's like, just go up there, do your thing and for about an hour or two, uh, yeah. something like that. Um and and anyway I do and he's like and me and me and me and my wife are gonna take you to breakfast tomorrow before we go take you to the airport. Him and his wife took me. Julie was really hired me. Yeah, his wife. No way. It, it had he had to get the approval. That's really I think what yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. So thank you, Julie. It's like Julie, I got this guy. Right. Let me know what you think after brunch. It was the best decision that Julie ever made for Jimmy <laughs> Steele. Um, <laughs> but that yeah, I went to breakfast and then um. Basically said, "Hey, we want to, we want to, we want you. Out, you mm-hmm. know, we'd love to have you out here." And yeah, and it was one of those things where I'm like, "I already have this. Is the you know the grass greener on the other side type mm-hmm. thing?" But uh, but it ended up making the decision. decision. It, it was a it was a hard decision that that ultimately was an easy decision, or maybe it was an easy decision that ultimately became yeah, hard. I was going to say, know. I, you know, coming from Dallas, what what was it that made it hard for you? Because um, friends out there. Um, uh, what makes any decision hard when you've been used to being mm-hmm. in one place? You know, change can be scary. Um, comfort zone. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, my 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 some family in mm-hmm. Dallas, mainly my son. It was a difficult decision. Where's the Where's the point that you realize the decision to get out here is m- worth it? Is May- there someone that you go to? How does that come about? Um. My son was a big factor. I mm-hmm. want to be able to, to offer him opportunities that normally he wouldn't have, mm-hmm. um, and I and and uh, and and also just knowing that this is a once in a lifetime opportunity, and I got to take it. Mm-hmm. I got to do it. I got to make it work, and I did. Yeah, and, and I would fly back and forth to Dallas to L.A. like. 
uh, once a month, mm-hmm. and and I'd bring him back with me, and sometimes I'd stay there, and I and I had a great relationship with his mom, so yeah. I would stay there with them, mm-hmm. um, and then and then sometimes bring him back, uh, and, and went and did that for years. Yeah, so um, kind of had the Dallas L.A. connection going. So my son mm-hmm. it virtually kind of you know virtually grew up in L.A. Yeah. At, as well. Uh, Was that a point in your life where? You know, like having a son, it really made you work harder. Oh man, that was my that was my number one motivation. Mm-hmm. You know, as and to a certain degree, still is now. Yeah, because you know, I want you know, and and I have a daughter as well. Mm-hmm. Um, shout to James and Elise. Yeah, they, they you know, I want them to be you know, I want them to be proud of me. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, but I also want to be able to pay for yeah. school and you know, exactly stuff like that that they're doing and. Um, uh, or things that they may need, and mm-hmm. just I want to make sure that I can do everything I can as a as a father to be there for them. Which I've met both of them, both great kids, <laughs> and you know, and I and I see them come to the station and come to Powerhouse, and you see it in their eyes that they're <laughs> proud of their dad. You know what I mean? <laughs> that you, and that they have the opportunity to do these things and mm-hmm. to have someone that supports them. So you've you've done exactly what you were you wanted to do. <laughs> you know, I kind of have. I kind of have, man. It's surreal sometimes, man. It's, uh, you know, it's, I, like I said earlier, man, I'm blessed to be doing mm-hmm. uh, what I love to do yeah. and get paid to do it. Uh, and, 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 and you know from from working at the, uh, at power it's mm-hmm. just the environment it's mm-hmm. just it's just such the people are great mm-hmm. i mean i i i'm i'm on top of the world every day i wake up and, i love that and uh, seriously man and you know and then being able to express myself mm-hmm. on the air yeah uh being able to express myself through music and 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 being able to express myself in front of a crowd mm-hmm. on the turntables does that uh, help you deal with life like oh man you, do you use that as an outlet? Oh, dude, I wouldn't know what I, I would. I would be a mess. Yeah. I mean, I'm a mess as it is sometimes. <laughs> uh, you know, just just uh, because I, I'm I'm my I'm my hardest critic. I'm yeah. really tough on myself, and I mm-hmm. and I find myself sometimes saying, "I oh, mean, you gotta relax," you mm-hmm. know. And I do. As I've gotten older, mm-hmm. I've learned to, you know. Uh, not only I was gonna say appreciate that's not the word, um, but but that too learn mm-hmm. to appreciate things more. Yeah. But learn to kind of live in the moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but at the same time push for the future. Yeah. And that that's the that's the the balance. You where, know what I'm saying? Where where like did you you feel that you kind of like? No, nah, I wouldn't say learned it, but like got to a place where. You realized, and and I don't think a lot of people ever realize mm. that balance of like, don't take everything so seriously. Right. You can be you can be motivated and driven, right? But sometimes that can negatively impact your life if you're too wired on it. You got to make time to go to the dog park. You know, you got to make time to get in your your Lolo and and mm-hmm. and put the top back and just you know cruise. Um, I, I, I got to a point where there was a turning point in my life where to be quite honest, I probably could have gone and still can, Mm -hmm. um, a little further with certain things, especially my music and my Mm -hmm. DJ and stuff. Um, but I love radio Mm -hmm. and it was going to require me to, to, to veer off a little bit. We're getting deep now, bro. Uh, <laughs> no, that the, the, these this is are, actually some stuff I've never talked about. These are the points uh, that I think that I want uh, people to understand because we don't. Ha- oh, not everyone has a mentor. Not everyone has someone standing next to them that will guide them and help right. them. And these stories that you're telling are the ones that's going to help other people make good decisions. Thank you, and and that's 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 amazing to to be able to to think that people learn from things that I'm yeah. saying or been through but um man I I got to a point where you know I didn't want to lose the radio thing and become this producer artist mm-hmm. and not have the radio thing yeah um I didn't want to lose the DJ thing I didn't want to just DJ and do radio and not be mm-hmm. and it, and you know it it's it really was a struggle for me at some par- parts of has been over the parts of my career mm-hmm. um 
you know, there'd be stints where it's like, man, when are you going to come out with a new record? Yeah. You know, and for me, it's always, everything's been, everything is vibe for me. Mm -hmm. Everything is like, I'm not going to force something. Good. Uh, and it was also seeing what goes behind, you know, <sighs> Dealing with certain things that I would have to deal with, with, mm -hmm. with, with getting an artist on a record, uh, it it was it was it's sometimes stressful. Yeah. And I think one of the things that I learned, and and this and I, this will answer a lot of people's questions mm -hmm. that ask me like, why haven't you put out more records, and why did you get away from doing that as much? And obviously, mm -hmm. I still do. Yeah. Uh, but it was because I it was. It was stressful. Mm -hmm. You know, it got to the point where it was stressful for me. I'm like, yeah. this isn't fun. You know, I don't want to chase a singer or a rapper, mm -hmm. uh, an MC down to, to, to get on a record. Yeah. So I got to the point where it's like, listen, if you want to do this and you're feeling this, uh, you can be, a, I'd love you to be a part of it, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to chase you down. Yeah. And, and, and there's other people in the game that, that are in, in similar positions as me or were mm -hmm. that would do that. And I respect that. Mm -hmm. Um, Khaled is one of those people. Yeah. I, I would, you know, I would, and, 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 and him and I had our ups and downs as, mm -hmm. as friends. Uh, but I have so much respect for that dude because man, mm -hmm. to, to anybody that's ever said like, yeah, but Khaled doesn't produce his own music and he mm -hmm. gets it. Don't really understand how this works. Yeah. Uh, that dude knows his shit. Um, he, he is ultimately the producer of these songs and more importantly, what, what, what he's been able to do, uh, that honestly I didn't have in me to do it, mm -hmm. uh, was, was deal with all these artists yeah. and find a way to conduct and and put these things together on a consistent basis day in and day out. Yeah. I realized that that's not who I am and that wasn't for me. So I would get my fill and still do mm -hmm. when it makes sense to do a record and I and I and and everybody's down and it feels like it's flowing. Yeah. Man, we're doing a record. Um and you know, I teamed up a few years ago with with my buddy Alex and and my 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 partners uh, Alex and Louie, mm -hmm. and we formed a group, the Americanos. Um, and I think I liked that because it took a little bit of the pressure off of me because mm -hmm. being a solo producer artist, you know, yeah. everything's on me. All the weight on, on and, just you. Yeah, and Alex and Louie, and... they, they helped take that off of me. A little bit creatively for sure, mm -hmm. but definitely from the business end. Yeah. You know, like... You want it to be fun. You want it to be right. loose. You want to enjoy the experience. It was either... And I tell people, you know, you, 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 for me, I want to do this forever. Yeah. And I realize if I'm going to do this forever, I got to pace myself. I always compare it to like LeBron now. And people right. always say, well, is it okay for him to play at 50, 75% pace during the year and then play 100% in the playoffs? I say, Correct. yo, if he's going to get to the playoffs and win, yeah, it is. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Like he knows that if he goes 100% all the time, his body's going to break down. Yeah. No, for sure. And, and and it's been a struggle, man. Like, I've seen, you know, even with the DJ world, mm -hmm. I've seen certain things it, 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 that I've really wanted to do, and yeah. I haven't been able to accomplish it. Mm -hmm. Same thing, like I said, with the music side. There's things that, I've, that I think I really at one point wanted to do, wasn't really able to accomplish it. And... Um, and, 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 you know, you, you find yourself like getting low key jealous, mm -hmm. like, man, you know, I, yeah. I, I really wish I could do those type of clubs. Mm -hmm. uh, I really wish I could set a mark, mm -hmm. um, and, 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 and do the music thing on that level. Yeah. But as quick as I find myself feeling like that is, is, is just as fast as I realize that's not where I'm supposed to be. I'm supposed to be right here. So smart. And, and, and I'm, and I'm content. Uh, to a certain de to, to a certain degree, mm -hmm. I don't yeah. ever want to be a hundred percent. Nah, you don't want to ever want to be co too but, comfortable. But but I'm comfortable enough with who I am and where I'm at in my life. And man, I've experienced so much shit, bro. Yeah. I've, I've and we spoke a little bit because you know I've I've been to Australia. Yeah. One of the many places I've been mm -hmm. around the world, London, all over Asia and uh, uh Europe, I mm -hmm. should say. London, one of the places. Yeah. Asia, um, you know, Mexico, Canada. I keep going. Yeah. Uh, and. That alone, you know what I'm saying, yeah. has just been like, and all this because of music. Yeah. Um, not to mention all the people I've met, um, and, and and I don't mean just the celebrities. Yeah. Um, you know, um, and the singers and rappers and actors and actresses and whatever. I, I, I mean, 
some of the behind some of the most amazing people that I've met are well, behind, behind the, the scenes. scenes. Yeah. Um, but man, I, I I keep saying it's all the bl- that I'm blessed and I am. Yeah. I, I just, dude, I'm in such a great place mm-hmm. in my life. Um, well, it's, it's crazy because like the since I've met you. I, I, I knew about you before I met you, but I didn't know who you were because especially coming from Australia, we don't have radio, American radio. Right. Um, but Wait, like, what do you guys have? What do you well, mean? We, we have radio, we have radio but we don't not... have this Power oh, 106. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, yeah. But then we talk about like, you know, like you you have had some songs that are like worldwide smashes. Like, <laughs> like Buck in here, I, re- I vividly can remember being in clubs and that song coming on. And I have no idea who Felly Fell is at this stage. How does it feel to know that, like, people know your work <laughs> but don't know who you are around the world and have experiences and stories to connect with that? Man, it's j- surreal. Yeah. Um, man, you know, that 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 record and a few others were just it was a lot of luck man it was a lot of luck mixed with with me meeting the right people why luck because i think people make their luck uh you know yeah um and i appreciate that um you know akon gave me a monster hook man mm-hmm. he gave me a monster hook that was when akon was like at, just like he coming was, into his SP. prime he was you know, killing every song did he love the record and did three verses mm-hmm. uh you only hear two on the record. There is a third. Where's the third <laughs> verse? It's somewhere in a vault. <laughs> uh, but he loved the record, and, and then and I, and I was a blessing. And then you know, Ludacris mm-hmm. smashed that that verse. Um, Lil John, yeah, you know that was toward the tail end. I decided I'm gonna slow this record down. I'm, yeah. We gonna, as John would say, we gonna make it crunk. And yeah. you know, I slowed the BPM down. And as a DJ, wanted a transition. Mm-hmm. I'm like, man, we do transition edits as DJs. Why don't I just make that a part? Of, of the, the song. song, and that actually, I can't. I mean, that that idea uh, came from me being a DJ and playing a house record, yeah. a house music record back in the day. I think it was Lil Louis French Kiss. Mm-hmm. Uh, for all the DJs that might remember that song, French Kiss was a record that was, I think it was like 122 BPM, and it slowed down in the middle of the record. Yeah, the BPM slowed down to like. 70 BPMs and, wow. a, and a girl was having an orgasm yeah, yeah, yeah. as the record slowed down. And I remember, you know, that was a, a big influence on me doing that transition with Get Buck. But how is it managing all those? Because, like, at that stage, all those artists you've just named are like popping. Right. They're all like, how is it managing to get a song produced with all those people on it? Um, You know, I, I was instrumental. And the radio station was instrumental, and I always give credit mm-hmm. um, and praise to, to Power because yeah. I was on a platform. I still am. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when you can break somebody's record, yeah. it, it, it doesn't make it as difficult, mm-hmm. you know, to get them on a record. Yeah. Uh, and let's just, let's just keep it, let's just keep 100, it 100, yeah. man. Mm-hmm. Um, now, I will say that, you know, if any of those artists heard me say that, yeah. I think they would probably say, "Yeah, I would hope yeah. that they would say, yeah, but your your records were kind of dope." Oh, uh, because Diddy was gonna... rec- those records it, are undeniable, yeah. and, and so I can say that, mm-hmm. and, and, and 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 but I can also say that I think Diddy really genuinely mm-hmm. Luda genuinely Lil John, even though he was a friend of mine, yeah. way before records, yeah. Um, could honestly, they would have said, Felly, I love you, mm-hmm. but, you know, I ain't getting on this record. Yeah. And so so I can tell you that, yeah, a lot of it is the initial thing is having the relationship. Mm-hmm. You got to build a relationship. And I and I was able to take the platform that I have at Power yeah. and uh, and build these relationships. A lot of it was hitting it off with the artists. Yeah. You know, I, I don't think I've ever, I don't think I can name any artist that if you go type my name in and look at all the records I've done mm-hmm. that I didn't have some type of real connection with yeah. or I wasn't going to do a record with them. That's smart. Even if they wanted to do it. Mm-hmm. Be, I just don't, it's not who I am. I kind of got to like you. Yeah. You know, I kind of got to, you know, me and Diddy have had our, had our, you know, ups and downs mm-hmm. over the years. 
but he was somebody that I admired and appreciated not only, you know, um, um, his, his, uh, business expertise, mm-hmm. but, but, but his talent, yeah. you know, a lot of people don't really, you know, people think, oh, he didn't write his own shit. He didn't, Diddy is a talented dude. Um, Luda, same thing. We had, we hit it off. Mm-hmm. You know, we had kind of the a town connection, yeah. uh, being that, that he was from Atlanta, originally from Detroit, but he grew up in Atlanta. And so it's gotta be something there, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, Neo, you know, there was just a mutual respect we always had. I was a fan of his. Mm-hmm. He knew that I that I had broken a lot of his records, and we just kind of had a mutual respect for one another. Mm-hmm. Um, what about Kanye? How does that happen? Kanye, the, the hookup with Kanye was two things. Number one, a lot of people don't know, he was in the Heavy Hitter DJ crew, which I'm still a Heavy wow, Hitter. Wow, I shout, did not know shout that. Shout to all my Heavy Hitters. Kanye... Uh, was a heavy hitter. Crazy. Kanye was a producer at the time. He mm-hmm. was not doing the rap thing commercially. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, publicly. publicly. He was. Yeah. He was doing. You know, he was. But he was rapping. Mm-hmm. He, you know, and uh, I remember he did a record for uh, Excuse Me Miss. I think it yeah. was for for Ho. Okay. Yeah. And he got me. He's like, Felly, I I, I I did a remix to this. It's me rapping on it, and he got it to me, and it was him rapping on it, and I played it on the air in L.A. First time it had ever gotten played on the air. Wow. And so it was, it was, and, and it was before he was Yay. Yeah. You know, he he was Kanye, mm-hmm. but he wasn't Yay. Mm-hmm. And uh, and and he never forgot that, you know. And and he, you know, he was so when it came time, you know, to do a record, I came to him and I said, Yo, I got something. Mm-hmm. Neil's on the hook. Uh, and uh, you know, I think I was still trying to figure out who else I was going to put on the record. I don't, I don't think Jermaine or Fab was on the on record there yet. But you know, and Yay killed it. Mm-hmm. And and God bless him because shortly after that his mom passed. Yeah. And and I was real leery about putting this record out. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first line in the song was a cele- celebratory or a celebrating type line. Mm-hmm. Like right about this time, raise your glasses. Mm-hmm. You know what's that motivation? That ass is. And I and I and I didn't want to be disrespectful. Mm-hmm. Is that how you're feeling now? You yeah. recorded this song because people before. are only going. They don't know that. But he was a, a champ, man, and God bless him because, you know, um, that was a game changer, <laughs> no pun intended, mm-hmm. for me because to have Kanye West on a record with with Neo, mm-hmm. Fabulous, and Jermaine Dupri, yeah. you know, was just a, you know, I was, that was a dream record for me, come right. true. I mean, so was Get Buck. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, uh, and I had a lot of dream records, man. You yeah. know, if like, if I never produce another record yeah. the rest of my life, you know, Pitbull and Akon yeah. and, and, and JD, you mm-hmm. know, those type of records, Tyga, Wiz, I mean, it, it, just to say it out loud is crazy. Yeah. Uh, so I, I'm good. Yeah. But I still, I still love it. Um, are there any of those artists that you you mentioned, or even even not of those artists that have really kind of like helped you in a sense of like keeping you on the path, or let you go to for advice, or just kind of like looking at their careers and mm-hmm. being like, okay, for sure, I respect that. I mean, all of them. Yeah, and, and I've taken different things, you know, which I think we probably all have. Yeah, you know, like something from Wiz, mm-hmm. um, something from Ye. Yeah, um, I got a chance to spend a lot of time with Kanye um, in Hawaii one one time. Yeah, uh, for about a week. Uh, we, he he was living out there. He had a place out there, I should say, and he was nice. recording and uh, played basketball every day with him. And how's and, he on the court? And, and got to see him. He's all right. He's, right. he's he's not as good as he thinks he is. <laughs> <laughs> he's a way better producer, kind of yeah. like me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, That's why he got along so well. <laughs> yeah, he, he's a way better producer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, than I am for sure. But um, yeah, man, like just being on the court, seeing somebody that you appreciate and you respect so much in this arena. Yeah. And then seeing how they are in this arena. Yeah. Uh, or I should say, small gym. Uh, but yeah, man, he he's just as competitive on the court. He's mm-hmm. the same Kanye on the court. But you know, and, and so you see that, and you see how Neo is when he's trying to decide what he's going to do with a record. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm playing him a beat, and yeah. you know how he how he takes it in, or um, you know, sitting down with Diddy and and and, and just hear him just oh man, how do I take all this in at yeah. one time? You know. Um, 
and and dealing with Diddy over the years as, as, as with the whole Ciroc campaign. Yeah. Funny thing about Ciroc. So Ciroc, the first video that Ciroc was ever endorsed in was "Get Buck in Here." I remember. I at the very beginning, you said put your put your Ciroc bottles in the no, air. No, that was that was that was Boomerang. Oh, that's Boomerang. But, okay, but, yeah. But at the end of "Get Buck in Here," uh, we hold up. I think it was me and Diddy. We yeah. hold up a Ciroc bottle. It was the blue dot. Damn. And he had that on the set when we shot his video part, his part of his video in Miami. Yeah. Khaled was actually in that video because uh, I Crazy. shot it in Miami yeah. and I knew, you know, obviously I'm coming out there. I'm like, Cows, you got to get here. in the video. Yeah. So he's he's on the golf course <laughs> in the video. But, but yeah, yeah, I mean, having those type of relationships, mm. man, with some, you know, being able to just pick up the phone and call Diddy yeah. has been, you know, it just, man. I, and, and even people like Lil Jon mm -hmm. and Jermaine that I've known for years Seeing what the, I mean, look at John, man. You yeah. know, John. John is somebody that I can relate to. I think more than all those people. Yeah. Because he was a, a DJ turned producer mm -hmm. turned DJ still producing. Yeah. You know, and he understands radio. You know. Yeah. Uh, just such a versatile the full guy. package right there. For sure. Did um, did moving to LA, uh, really change? Um, cause I, I feel like when, when I meet people from Atlanta, I meet people from Dallas, there's a, there's a different, me, like a difference in like, uh, relationships, I would say. I feel like LA and I hear this a lot and I've been here now is relationships sometimes can be only on like a, what can I get from you basis? And I come from a culture where it's like, how can I be a good friend and how can I help someone out more than that? Did going away from L.A. and being in those places really influence you? Because I see you with these relationships, and those people don't have relationships with people that they don't really feel are genuine. Those people would stick away from those. Did going away from L.A. help you at all in that sense? You mean growing up growing in Atlanta? Because and, and... when I speak to people from Atlanta... It's it feels very yeah. cultural and yeah. very what well, does southern it's uh, you know Luda said it with the southern hospitality song mm -hmm. I mean I grew up um, I grew up a southern boy in Atlanta Georgia that was a Laker fan a Dodger fan and a Cowboy fan oh my god so as much as I loved Atlanta <laughs> you know. Growing up there, you know, and I think is, 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 is a lot of people can relate to this. Mm -hmm. You know, you you know, there's more out there. Yeah. You know, I was growing up seeing the Lakers, Magic yeah. Johnson, and you know James Worthy, and I was seeing you know mm -hmm. you know the Cowboys. My neighbors used to fly a cowboy flag. Yeah. So I knew there's more out there, and I was interested. I was hungry. Yeah. But I came from an upbringing with a family that was very. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Mm -hmm. You know, right from wrong. Yeah. Uh, and I and I owe that to 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 my mom and my dad. Mm -hmm. And uh, and and then my mom, to 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 touch on something you asked earlier, um, did I get support from my family? Um, I think my mom wanted to see me go to college. Yeah. You know, I had opportunities, especially with baseball, mm -hmm. that could have took me maybe further but but you know my mom we went to college to be a journalist mm -hmm. uh and i think she would love to see me continue my education yeah so she didn't discourage me from doing music but she excuse me she didn't encourage me but she didn't discourage me it yeah. was one of those like if this is what you want to do do it the best you can mm -hmm. um kanye said uh to touch on something else you said he he says um People, people only, um, and I hope I don't mess this quote up. People are only as good as far as they need you. It, it was something like that. Mm -hmm. And I think basically what it's saying is that um, people are going to befriend you as long as you can do something for them. And the minute you can't do anything for them anymore, mm -hmm. they're going to get ghosts. Yeah. And, and I, and I definitely have experienced that. Yeah. Um, out here in LA. Mm -hmm. And I've been real quick to try to remind myself like, uh, uh, I'm not going to be that person. Um, uh, and it's hard because you get, you know, you get caught up and yeah. you, especially when you're on your grind, you're trying to get things done. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not looking back. Yeah. And I've tried really hard to not be that guy. You know, I've tried to always look back and try to, you know, 
do what's right. Yeah. Uh, and, and and so I think a lot of my upbringing has helped me with that. Mm-hmm. But L.A. is a it's it's a it's a it's a beast, man. Mm-hmm. You know, people are definitely like they want to know what you do and how you can help them. And if you can't, you you might as well just delete their number out of your phone because they're yeah. not going to take your call. Yeah. You know, for the most part. I try not to be no, that person. Of and, course. And, and, it, and, it, and, and I have had a challenge with that mm-hmm. because, you know, everybody wants something. Yeah. You know, especially when you're on a platform and you're in a certain position and, and you really do have to pick and choose who you give your time to. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will say that. How do you uh, manage your time now? How do you whew. find a time, a balance for you to do your thing? Man. Radio, music. Having a great team. Yeah. Uh, having a my assistant nor mm-hmm. uh and i've had a few assistants over the years um having a, a an attorney mm-hmm. that handles you know my day-to-day music stuff radio stuff even um having a business manager having a a, a booking agent um you think that's important to relieve Oh duties? yeah, because a lot of people want to do everything. I, I don't want to see. I don't want. I, I just want to do the creative. Just put yeah. me on the radio. Mm-hmm. You know, just put me in the DJ booth. Yeah, just put me in the studio. And and I and I've been able to do the other things. A, I don't think I'm very good at, at doing those <laughs> things. Nor do I want to do them. Yeah, which has probably been a um a a, a halt in my certain things in my career a little bit mm-hmm. but but again i'm not i don't want to do anything that i don't feel comfortable doing so i'm fine with it yeah and whatever i'm able to do is what's meant to be mm-hmm. uh but i have a great team and the team that i work with and for at power 106 mm-hmm. has allowed me to to, to to be me and do me yeah and understands me mm-hmm. you know and and appreciate and i appreciate that the fact that they've you know over the years given me you know given me that yeah. and uh you know, man, I, I and I can never see myself. Um, I can never see myself. You know, it'd be very <laughs> it, to juggle these things has been difficult. But mm-hmm. I've been handed damn near on a silver platter yeah. the opportunity from the amazing people. Mm-hmm. And I again, I use the word luck. I've been real lucky, man. I've met good people. Yeah, you know. But I think that that's also obviously because you are a good person <laughs> and <laughs> people. You will get drawn to that and that's where support comes from you know like i'm not going to i can be an asshole dustin well we can all we can all be an asshole on on some time and on times. extent so but at, at, at that at that stage you, you can you can uh look back on those moments and like do you feel like you can in inwardly look at what you do and you've learned and you've 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 become the person you are today because you've allowed yourself to change. Oh yeah, yeah, man. I mean, you know, it, it, I think, I think um, it, it's it's necessary for for me to survive. Like I have to be able to to change, and I have to be okay with things. I mm-hmm. have, you know, uh, and again, it comes. I think from my upbringing. Like I I I I don't like weight on my heart yeah you know what i'm saying when it comes to um you know oh man this person you know is looking at me crazy because you know mm-hmm. i couldn't give them my time or yeah. or i couldn't give them the opportunity they wanted that that's tough for me mm-hmm. and so i really do try my best to to you know uh, yeah. and i try to put myself in a position where I, I I try to balance stuff, and I know we keep bringing that mm-hmm. up, but it's important, man. Yeah. You know, I want to be, you know, w- 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 I'm not gonna be here forever. Yeah. And while I am here, I want I want to get the most I can out of the opportunities. Yeah. But also live a healthy lifestyle and be, you know, I want to chill, man. Yeah. Like I don't want to look back. You gotta enjoy it and say I did all these things, but I I wasn't able to go to the dog park with mm-hmm. with my pup, mm-hmm. and I wasn't able to to go play ball with the homies on Wednesday night yeah. or go go hang with the homies with the and hit some switches and yeah. you know shine my Dayton's on, yeah. on the six four. I want to look back and and say, man, you know, I did all this, but man, because though. Hanging out with your friends and family are going to be the things later on in life that you're really you you you're going to really hope mm-hmm. and wish that you had those memories. Yeah. So all these things I'm doing in my career that are so fulfilling and they are. Yeah. You know, um, 
are not going to, I don't think it's not going to compare so and where, it doesn't compare to me doing these other things. So where do you get the drive from now? Because we talked er, the earlier and you mentioned <laughs> your kids right. as you're driving and I, you know, your, your oldest son is 22. Two. Daughter's um, 21. Daughter's about to graduate college. Oh. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, but where does the drive, because you've gotten them to the place, you've, you put them through school, you've got them to have that start in life that is amazing. Tried. So now where is the drive for you to keep on creating? A lot of it is, a lot of it is just the desire to do it. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta make a beat. Yeah. You know, that's my, re that's my relax, my release. Um, I gotta get in that DJ booth and, 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 and have fun mm -hmm. and share music with people, um, live yeah um i gotta get on the air and express myself yeah you know um i want to i want to send a certain vibe to people i feel like i got to do it um but i think the most importantly <laughs> a lot of it is fear man yeah. you know a lot of it is fear that i i don't want to look back and say man i didn't do this i didn't mm -hmm. i didn't um take advantage of these amazing things that are being, um, and, and knowing also how many people want to be doing what I'm doing. Yeah. How many people would give their, you know, unborn child to, you know, man, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, do you have a question that you get asked the most? Cause I know that you must, wherever you are, you get, you know, kids come up to you, people like, Oh, Felly fell. You're the radio. I want to do this. I want music. I'm doing music. Is there a question that you get asked the most? by people that want to kind of either get in the industry or look at you as a role model in some way that they look it's like, ah, oh, man, if I could attain this. Mm. Man, that's a tough one. I don't know that there's any one question mm -hmm. because I get the question of how do, how do I get my, 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 my song played? Mm -hmm. Or, hey, how do I become a DJ? Uh, what do you tell the kid I... that asks how do you get your song played? Because I get it in my DMs all the time. I get it all, <laughs> yeah. and and I have no pull over. Yeah. So if you're watching this, my DMs no aren't, aren't aren't full of. A, uh, I wish it was more ladies <laughs> in my DM, but my DM is very similar. <laughs> yeah. Um. You know, man. I I tell people, listen. First and foremost, you got to have a great record. Mm -hmm. Um. You can want this and want it and want it and want it, but the uh, it always goes back to the song. Yeah. Uh, so really, the first thing I say is let me hear you, let me hear your song. Yeah. Because there's really not a lot that needs to be said mm -hmm. if you don't have the talent or 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 in this case you don't have that's the not product. the right song. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. um, what I'll what I'll what I'll say is like hey let me hear more music because yeah. I you know I'm not gonna judge you just on that record. Yeah. Um, although there are some records I've heard that, <laughs> yeah, but but I try not to do that. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, I like to think that you're going to come back with something better next mm -hmm. time. And, and you have to give people that because mm -hmm. this is that, this is their dream. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's, that's a, that's another thing that's tough, man, because, mm -hmm. you know, I've had to over the years be the bearer of bad news, mm -hmm. um, you know, when people want something so bad, man. Yeah. And dude, there's nothing worse than wanting something so bad and being told by a person that you know can help further that yeah. dream. Uh, th th there's nothing worse than being t told by that person that this isn't it. Have you had times where you've been told that, that allow <laughs> oh, you now yeah. to like deal with it? Yes. That's why I know how it feels. Mm -hmm. and, and and I love, you know, and to all the artists out there, you know, you got to know that I I understand that. Mm -hmm. uh, I've had, I've heard it from A&Rs when I've tried to, you know, submit music for somebody's album. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've uh, you know, heard it when I'm submitting my music to try to get a deal. Mm -hmm. I've had a few record deals over the years, currently with Atlantic Records. Mm -hmm. Um, shout to Def Jam, Interscope, you know, BMI. I mean, there's a couple deals yeah. that, you know, and, and as you can see, I don't have them now. Yeah. Uh, but, but, and that's for various reasons, but, mm. but yeah, I've heard no a lot Yeah. and I'm going to hear no a lot more, but I'm okay with that. And that's the message that I would like to send, um, to artists and, and DJs that mm -hmm. are trying to get put on yeah. and producers that are like, how do I get my beats heard? Really anyone out there trying to chase their dream. For sure. You're going to, well, yeah, whether you're trying to be, you know, make it uh, as a, in sports. Mm -hmm. Listen, I've always used this analogy, uh, speaking of sports. If you want to be a football player, sleep on the football field. Mm -hmm. uh, now, obviously, you're not literally physically going to do that. But obviously, what that means is you got to live, eat, shit, breathe it. Breathe it, yeah. Um, and, and, and I think that 
I can't. I can say honestly for myself, that's what I did, and that's mm. what I still do. Yeah. I wake up every morning, and it's all about you know music. Whether yeah. it's looking for a record to play on the radio, it's all about DJing. What am I gonna have in my laptop for the club? It's yeah. all about what am I? What's the next type of song I'm gonna produce? I you know, um, it's it's I I what what am I gonna talk about today on the radio? What 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 message am I gonna get across? Yeah. What's going on? You know, keeping up. You're with, not doing it part time. No, I live it, eat it, shit it, and breathe it. And I told mm-hmm. you earlier, maintaining it yeah. is sometimes you know the challenge more so than than and um, initially uh, get you know obtaining. Yeah, the, of course. The, yeah, getting there is easy. Staying there so is the hard part. You gotta no for sure, and you gotta uh, you know be careful what you wish for. Yeah, uh, or, or when you get it, be prepared for you know the work that you're gonna have to put in to keep mm-hmm. it. But uh, yeah, man, I, I've heard no so many times. I've heard it in radio. I've heard it from clubs. Yeah, and I've heard it from producing music and hoping that this is the you know this is amazing. Yeah, um, you're gonna hear no. Yeah, um, but you got to be okay with hearing no and using that to to challenge you to go better. No, I'm not saying you have to be okay with it. Yeah, because God knows I've I haven't been okay with it when I've heard <laughs> no. Yeah, but you. But I will say, um, it, um, you have to know how to. I guess that's a way to put it. Actually, is to be okay with it. You got to know how to how to how to how to hit, take that in your eardrum and, and you how you're going to gonna process you. it in your brain to be a catapult as opposed to an anchor or a, or a, a, a stone on, mm-hmm. on a chain. No you know, does not mean that that someone's putting a wall in front nope. of you that you can't get over. If anything, no should be the ultimate motivation mm-hmm. to prove know. them wrong. Yeah. Use your DMs as an example. How many times have you heard no in a DM, Dustin? Hey, probably I, all the time. Uh, all the time. I gave up on the DMs. That's a motivation, man. <laughs> man, Felly, thank you so much, bro. Like, bro, it's my pleasure. This this conversation will, I guarantee you, help a lot of people oh, out there. Man, that's awesome. Bro. And you know, I had you in here because I believe you are a game changer, and you still are changing the game. Thank you, brother. The easiest call. Flattered.